Hi there, Vinyl community. My name's Tom. You're watching High Rant District. I want to talk uh, today about uh, something I'll do now and then. Uh, I want to do a little bit of a series uh, called uh, Audiophile versus Original. Uh, kind of showing, you know, talking about the uh, original uh, release, the OG version of a record, and then comparing it to an audiophile version, you know, audiophile. I don't know why I did that. And then just, you know, figuring out like which to me uh, is the preferable version. Now this this video is really aimed at kind of the, I would say the average uh, person who enjoys music on records. You know, my gear is average. You know, what I, my, doing, for doing the comparison between these two records, I was doing it on a VPI Cliftwood, their most basic uh, record player, uh, going into a, an Adcom uh, preamp and just Listening, head, listening on headphones using the built-in headphone amp and the built-in uh, phono preamp on that Adcom, uh, what was it, GFP 565, I think I have. I and the cartridge is, uh, you know, basic. It's a great O-Green. So it, it's a, this is really geared towards, uh, you know, for the average person who listens to music on records, is it worth it to get the audio file version? So what I'm going to uh, compare today is uh, Lou Reed's Transformer. We've got, uh, this is the original version on RCA. I hope it's RCA. Yeah, it's on RCA uh, from 1972. Uh, compared to the uh, Speaker's Corner reissue, which came out in, uh, I'm just going to say the last couple years. I don't remember exactly what year it came out. I'll put a little graphic on the screen to say so. Now, uh, Speaker's Corner, in general, has a very good reputation, um, and deservedly so. Uh, it's a German reissue label. Uh, they, I think the records are all uh, pressed at Palace in Germany. Um, so, you know, you, you can be pretty confident when you, in general, when you get a record at Palace, that pressed at Palace, that it's going to, you know, not be fucked up. So the original, Lou Reed Transformer. One thing that, uh, just looking at the, uh, you know, the inner sleeves are playing on both of these, uh, but uh, just comparing the two uh, jackets, other than the Speaker's Corner being shinier and glossier, they're very much the same, you know, kind of the only things that are really different is on the original at the bottom, there's at the very bottom towards the end, I think it says, Printed in the USC, USA and um, something about a patent. But other than that, it's almost an exact duplicate. Uh, the spines are very similar. They say LSP 4807. Transformer Lou Reed. You got an extra set of numbers on the OG version. The top version is the original. I'm not crazy about these being so nearly identical as far as the outer sleeves go, uh, I wish the Speaker's Corner had put just at least a tiny little Speaker's Corner logo on it. It's, that's just like a little irritant to me. Um, and you know what? I'm going to pause for a second here and backtrack a little bit. So for the average person who listens to music on records, um, if you're looking between you know an affordable original copy of a record versus you know an audiophile record you know, and you're questioning whether you should spend the money, um, just, I would first say just make sure you're happy with the equipment you're using first. You can make, really turn all of your uh, records into, you know, audiophile by just by upgrading your gear. And I, and I can't stress enough that this is uh, aimed towards the average record listener that is interested more in the music uh, than obsessing about the sounds although I want to talk about the sounds. Um, there are people who are audiophiles that are uh, very focused on the quality of the sound. You know, like it does, when you hit a, a drum, like is it the reverb carry out, or how does the cymbal sound, or the pluck of a guitar, and it's, you know, decay. And um, for me, it's like, I'm not listening that deeply for that. It's really about the music instead of about the sound. There's nothing wrong with being somebody who's into the quality of the sound uh, you know you like what you like and you should have fun doing what you're doing um, just saying this is 
So you know who I'm gearing this towards. It's more of if you're into the music than the actual sound. And your gear that you listen on is fairly average. Uh, and I listen on headphones uh, to compare these two uh, Sennheiser uh, HD6XX. So yeah, spend uh, before you spend money on audiophile records, you know, upgrade your gear to a level that you'll be happy with. And that said, uh, I'm comparing two uh, records that play at 33 and a third. Um, if uh, audiophile record is pressed at 45 RPMs, you know, an LP that's split over two records into third into four, two uh, 45 RPM records, that thing should blow the original away. It really should, unless it was you know remixed and the mix is horrible. Uh, you know, I listen to some, um, in particular, like some mid '80s, to mid to late '80s um, reissues, uh, the John Peel label, Strange Fruit, where it's you know like four songs on a 12-inch record, so uh, it's a 45 RPM record, a 12-inch. Those things sound amazing. They're not audiophile per se, but you know, 45 RPMs a 12-inch is going to sound amazing. You know, so that's this is a 33 and a third RPM of uh, Speaker's Corner Audiophile reissue. And this, these, when they come out brand new on Speaker's Corner, I think they're around 35 bucks. Um, so just kind of comparing the, the sound, you know, the sounds. Yeah, I'm comparing the sounds and the music for both. Um, when I listened to these on my, uh, to the Speaker's Corner one, when I first got it uh, a bunch of months ago, on my you know regular stereo system, you know good quality system to me. You know I'd say low to mid five for you know to the, to an audio file. But it just sounded a little quiet. And I'm like oh okay, um, but it sounded clean. You know um, clean, crisp, but kind of quiet. I'm like oh okay. So because my stereo is in a room that's not like treated, it's not it's it's a bad room for it to have a stereo in. So listening on headphones I think is a fairer comparison. So. Just listening to side one, if you look at side one, oh, you can't see it that well. Uh, first track is uh, Vicious. It was just more alive on the original version than on the audiophile version. Uh, how should I say this? And I should have took notes when I was listening, but you know I'm not that person. Um, just look at just listening to the whole record. Uh, I think it's a perfect day. The the middle song was the only one on side A that really jumped out as being better on the speaker's corner version. Everything else sounded a bit more subdued on the uh, on the speaker's corner version compared to the original. Now the um, that song, perfect day. If I'm thinking of the right one has a lot of strings. It's kind of very soaring and orchestral. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think Speaker's Corner mostly does classical record reissues. So maybe they just have an air of expertise, of expertise in it that really brings it forward. Um, one of the starkest thing differences on side A of this record is, uh, you know, the final track on side A, Walk on the Wild Side, classic song. At the very end, you know, it's like where, you know, when you're getting towards the end, you know, and it's like, and the color girls, girls sing, you know, do, 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 You know, it's just kind of like, as they start singing, it's just kind of coming up and up and up and up into the mix. And, you know, the voices have, have life to them, you know, in the original version, but they just seemed subdued on the... Uh, and maybe it's just the way they mixed it. Uh, it just seems subdued on the speaker's corner version. The um, and the, the, when the sax kicks in at the very end on the speaker's corner version, I'm like, what the fuck happened? You know, because the sax is kind of I'm, I'm bad at describing sound, but it's like um, there's like maybe a little bit of a you know flutter to it, not like along the lines of wow and flutter as far as distortion, but it's like there's a reed sound to it or something. And the saxophone like just has so much live, and it's just like kind of smacking in the in the face on this. And maybe, and I'm gonna you know this is a U.S. pressing, maybe it's mixed you know hot, um, but for whatever reason you know it just sounded better on uh, on side A. On uh, 
side B. Um, side B of my record, of my original, um, and this is kind of what got me to buy a, um, an audiophile version, was in particular the first track is a little Rice Krispie-ish. You know, it's an old record, but it's got that crackle in it. I don't mind a little bit, but it's a little bit strong on the, on the first uh, two, Makeup. Um, but on the first tune, Makeup, and the last tune, uh, Good Night Ladies, there's some uh, tuba in there that just sounds more alive on the original version. Um, so, you know, they're, they're mixed a little bit differently. The rest of Side 2 for me is not so snap, crackle, popish. But, you know, just overall, you know, this, this is a very good copy. And, and maybe if, if I had better gear, um, maybe this is like, I would go, oh, wow, this is amazing. And this is what I should be uh, playing. But not really the case. So I feel like this has more of a soul to it for the type of record it is. It's, uh, you know, it's 1970s, early 70s. Uh, the the topic is you know very the topics are very gritty very New York City um, but very you know there's a soul to this that when you quiet things down a bit on an audiophile version like this it seems to have just lost a little bit of what makes it a special record uh, to me again this is to me the uh, you know the record itself the the labels look identical. This is the speaker's corner version. You know, it's good, heavyweight, uh, 180 gram record. The uh, and here's the ridiculous part. Not ridiculous to me because I don't think badly of this, but here's the uh, old uh, original RCA version. It's a it's a Dynaflex. It's a very floppy, very thin record. The Dynaflex records I have from the early 70s, though, universally sound fantastic to me. Now, my understanding is, like, you go later into the 70s, maybe the Dynaflex, you know, are a very cheaper, recycled mix of vinyl and don't sound as great. Um, that's what I've read, not what I've ex experienced. I don't know that I've really got more than one or two, if any, uh, late 70s Dynaflex. If it even was still going then, maybe I'm just talking out of my ass. I like to put that never stopped me. But uh, all in all, like, uh, if you can get an original copy that's uh, not all uh, snap, crackle, poppy, uh, of Lou Reed's Transformer. It's a really great album. Uh, I do recommend it. I, I would get the original version if you can. You know, if you're really obsessed with having, uh, you know, a clean, pristine version of an album, um, then Speaker's Corner does it very well. You know, it's it's a very good album. Between the two, I prefer the original. Uh, but, you know, it's perfectly pressed. It's perfectly flat. Uh, doesn't have any sound defects. It's just, it, it, there's a little bit of the soul that I feel was lost on it. And full disclosure, you know, I my, my lean is towards original pressings. I don't really buy a whole lot of reissues. I have some. I've been buying more lately as the prices of originals that I don't yet have of older records. I've just gone uh, stratospheric. Uh, but, uh, so, you know, Speaks Corner is a great label. Um, I do recommend them highly. They're also, when the records first come out, if you're buying them directly the first when they first come out, they're not crazy expensive for an audio file record. 35 bucks, I think. So, uh, but if you can, you know, with something like this, with Blue Reads Transformer, if you can get an original, even on Dynaflex, you know, it's got a soul to it. It's got, uh, you know, you can feel the instruments, you know, the, the vocals on most of the tracks sound better. You know, there's a one or two tracks, you know, particularly the... Uh, the, the one with all the strings in it, Perfect Day, I believe, you know, on the Speaker's Corner version, it sounds better. Overall, the whole experience, um, the original is better to me. Enough babbling. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.